Okay, this is uh, Math 1600, uh, the makeup lecture for uh, what we missed this past week. Um, so today, was so I'm recording this on Friday, uh, we did summarizing categorical or qualitative data. We did some uh, bar graphs, histogram, and the pie chart. Uh, the, talked about the frequency distributions uh, and relative and percent frequency. So what we're going to do is the same kind of thing now except we're going to be doing it with quantitative data and when you use quantitative data uh, there's a couple issues that arise. The main one being that because quantitative data can come to, in numeric form uh, you can't just uh, take the frequency of just the numbers themselves because you're likely to end up with a bunch of frequencies that are all one or very small frequency. And that's not really giving you a sense of what the data looks like. So what we want to do is kind of put the data into classes that are at intervals of a certain length so you can get a general sense of the shape of the data. You don't want to use too few classes. If you, if you use too few classes, uh, it's going to not give you much information because all the data are going to be going into one class or another. And if you use too many classes, that's going to be bad too because that's going to be closer to just reporting the values. So something in the middle is a good balance between too few classes and too many classes. So that's the first question. How many non-overlapping classes do we want? Uh, once we figure that out, then we need to ask what's the width of each class. And I'll show you how to do that. And the third question, what are the lower and upper limits? That means where do the, uh, for each of the individual classes, where do they start and end? So what's the, the least and the biggest values that go into that class? So some general guidelines to use here. Um, I would say generally use between 5 and 25 classes. Uh, most of the time a good range to go up between is about 7 to 20. If you have more data values then you generally can get away with more classes. So if you have a data set that has hundreds or thousands of values you can definitely go 20-25 classes. Um, if you have a data set that's pretty small, 50 or less, you, you want to keep it more on the smaller side, probably less than 10. Uh, but, you know, you use your judgment on it. It, it depends on a case-by-case -case basis. That there is no, you know, hard and fast rule here that I can tell you. You know, you're going to say, how do I know how many classes? Uh, you just have to use your judgment uh, to do that. For the approximate class width, this is another thing you have to use a little bit of judgment on. We're going to look at the range, which is the largest value in the data set, minus or the smallest value. So the largest... Uh, value of the variable minus the smallest value. And then you divide that by the number of classes and that gives you your approximate class width. This, this largest value minus smallest value is something we'll talk about later. It's called the range and it's it's just saying this is the span of the values. They, they span this interval length. So for instance if your data range from 32 to 97 and let's say that you decide that you want about nine classes, then you would take the range, which is 65, 97 minus 32, 65, divide it by nine classes, and you end up with seven and two ninths. Now notice, that's not an integer. And you only have an integer number of classes. It doesn't make any sense to say you have seven and two ninths classes. So you're just going to round it to the nearest integer. Um, again, this is all approximate. So this is just for you to come up with a, a good number that works for you. Don't, you know, spend too much time worrying about, well, what if it's, uh, you know, I get a number that's one more, one less than I thought I wanted, or, you know, if it's not a, an integer, it's a fraction, you have to round it one way or another. Uh, this is all just a kind of heuristic uh, number, numbers that are just going to get us an idea of about what we want and then you can choose something that's close to that that works. Uh, the third consideration, each data value you have to be very careful it falls into exactly one class 
And in practice, what this means is you have to decide how the boundary values are going to fall. Um, if it's data that are can take on a, a lot of values, so you're giving it to like the hundredth of a unit, say, then what you usually do is you'll you'll say it's going to go so that say it's from one up to 1.99, 2 up to 2.99, 3 up to 3.99. In that case, what you're doing is you're you're specifying that if it's uh, on the boundary between them, which would be like the integer value 1, 2, or 3, you're saying those are going to go into the the next, uh, they're going to be going into the higher one. So if it's 2, it's going to go into 2 to 2.99, not the 1 to 1.99. So you just have to make sure kind of how that works. and the example that we'll do, I'll show you. Have to you have to be careful about that. What we're going to do is use the heights in the nine o'clock section, the early section. Um, so the one o'clock section. Sorry, uh, we just don't use your data for this one. So uh, let's construct a frequency relative and percent distribution table. Um, so I'm just going to give you the data here it, for the nine o'clock section. You can go and look at your spreadsheet. For the one o'clock section, just take it from me that uh, this is the the numbers that we got from that section. Okay. So for that section, the heights range from 59 to 74. So that's a range of 15. Uh, there was 40 students for 40 elements. I would say good choice of classes is about eight. That gives us an approximate class width of about 15 over 8, or about 2. 15 over 8 is not exactly 2, but it's pretty close to 2. So I'm going to take 2 to be my class width. So here is the frequency distribution table. So it's got the same format that we had before, categorical. The classes, frequency, relative frequency, percent frequency. Differences here, instead of these being values of a categorical variable, they're classes that were determined by the class width. Now, the upper and lower limits. So we need to talk a little bit about this. Notice, so these 410, 50, 52, 54, 56, these are what are called the lower limits. It's the least value for a given class. 411, 51, 53, and so on. Those are the upper limits. Notice that the upper limit here is not two inches more than the lower limit. In other words, you cannot take the lower limit, add the class width to it, and expect to get the upper limit. What you want to do is you want to take the sm smallest lower limit and then continue to add class width to it, and that will generate all the lower limits. So get all the lower limits at first. Okay. 410 plus 2 inches is 50, plus 2 inches is 52, and so on. Then look at your lower limits and if you take one less than the lower limit of one of them that'll give you the upper limit for the one preceding it. That's the most uh, straightforward way that I can explain it uh, without making a mistake so that it'll keep you from making a mistake. So for instance let's say your lowest lower limit was 20 and you want a class width of 4. So Here's what you want to do. You want to say, I'm going to start at 20. I'm going to add 4 to each of those lower limits. And that's going to give me lower limits of 20, 24, 28, 32, and so on. The upper limits, then, you get from taking one less than the lower limit. So what's the upper limit of the first class? Go to the second class. It's 24 is the lower limit. Take one less than that, 23. That's the upper limit, then, of the preceding class. 1 less than 28, 27. 32, 31. So the classes end up being 20 to 23, 24 to 27, 28 to 31. This is um, it's a common thing in math. There's a name for it. I, I don't remember it, but it's it has to do with the fact that even though the, the class width is 4, the difference between the lower and upper limit is 3. It's off by 1. It's a called the off by one problem or something. But make sure to do it the way I'm showing you here, that you do the lower limits first and then do the upper limits later. Here's what you don't want to do. Okay, look over here. People will start with the lower limit of 20, 
add 4 to get the upper limit of 24, and then add another 1 to get the next lower limit and call it 25. What's the problem here? Well, the problem is you have lower limits of 20, 25, 30. That means that each class actually has a width of 5, not 4. We want a class width of 4, not a class width of 5. So that's the wrong way to do it. Okay, so from the spreadsheet, uh, if you went into the spreadsheet and you looked at the the class heights, and you tallied them up, you did the same kind of tallying that we did for the categorical variable, favorite color. Um, these are the frequencies you get. 1, 4, 4, 8, 11, 2, 6, 3, 1. Notice we got nine classes. I said a good choice of classes would be about eight. So should I be really worried? Again, that's okay. This is only approximate. If you decide I went about eight and you end up with seven or you end up with nine, that's no big deal. You just want to get something that's close to that. So it doesn't have to be exactly eight. It could be seven or eight or nine. Uh, relative frequency, percent frequency, those are just the same as we did before. Okay, so... Okay, so let's look at the histogram or bar graph. Um, there's two major types of graphical displays for this quantitative data. Uh, the first kind is very similar to what we did before with a couple important exceptions. So, one thing you'll note, um, these bars in the graph, they're touching. Remember with the categorical, I said you want to put a little bit of space between them because it doesn't really make any sense to say that they're touching because there's no lower and upper limits that are numerically equal. But in this case, there are. So, 410 to 411, we want to have that touching 5, 0 to 5, 1, which is just touching 5, 2 to 5, 3. Um, because these really are values that are close to each other. They're not separate uh, labels of things that are not really have any meaning to say one is close to the other. That's the major difference. Um, pretty much everything else is the same. The frequency, you do the same thing to get the percent frequency. Um, you would change the scale here. So you're going to change this to percent frequency, change the units here. Be sure to include the label, uh, the units, and and what it represents, the heights in feet and inches. Notice this is roughly symmetrical, um, possibly bimodal, which means that there's kind of two centers. So there's one kind of uh, bell-shaped curve here. There's maybe another one over here. Um, that may be due to the fact that we had uh, kind of a roughly half male, half female, and those two different groups of students may have different heights. And if you looked at them each separately, maybe it would uh, show that each of them had a, a shape that was contributing to this overall shape of all 40 students together. Um, then made other second uh, kind of graphical thing that you can uh, display these with is a dot plot. This is part of exploratory data analysis, which is a way of just generating graphs that allow you to kind of see data so that you can see what other questions you might want to ask or what other directions you might want to go in. Dot plot is a very simple kind of graph. It doesn't lose any of the uh, information. That's one thing about these histogram and frequency distribution, when you put things in the classes, you're losing some information. You don't know how many were 5, 6, how many were 5, 7, for instance, in this class. But with a dot plot, you don't lose any. You do all the values, and above each value, you just put some dots above it, evenly spaced, rising above each value. So for instance, this says 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, because there were 9 students that were 5 foot 7. Again, make sure and label it. It's just, a, a, ignore this stuff over here. This I wrote that and then it shouldn't be there. It's just a single axis, horizontal axis, and then the dots above it. Okay, so that's pretty much all we covered. Uh, 
that we need to cover. So I'll see you next week.